Hello Augies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a question from Donald Clark, WB6QEW, and here is his question. I'm setting up a new station on Beale Island in Maine. I've been a ham since 1986, much experience with antennas, etc. I bought a dipole antenna from MFJ, the 20 through 6 model. Now, I don't know which one that might be. That could be a hex beam, that could be a cobweb, uh, it could also be one of the octopus antennas, uh, could be a dipole. Um, so I'm not sure quite what we're dealing with here. Uh, it says, I hook this up to my ICOM 1300 transceiver. I think he means 7300, but it doesn't matter. Uh, with 18 foot section of RG213 coax. Uh, that's interesting. An 18 foot section of RG213 coax is not a very long piece of coax. It's quite short. Um, he says he can't get the SWR below infinity. I have an antenna in a slope, I guess sloper configuration at 30 feet. Well, if he's 30 feet, his 18 foot long piece of coax is still hanging in the air. Uh, do you have any suggestions to lower the SWR? Let's look at a variety of things that might be going on here. First of all, let me move this out so we're looking at the entire whiteboard. There we are. Put something on it so that it will uh, straighten out. <coughs> All right, so he's got a sloper antenna. Now that I think would mean some sort of a multiband dipole, maybe from the house to a tree. I um, haven't drawn a proper tree in years. Okay, um, and this is something that's 20 through 6, so it's at least 33 feet long. And if it's fed in the middle, and it's 30 feet high in the middle there, the drop to the ground for the coax is going to be whatever the height is this end, this height, average that height, and that'll be the long uh, run of the coax. Now, one thing you do not want to do is tie it in like this down to your shack, okay, because this will interact with this extensively and make it uh, quite hard to tune. Um, there are certain types of antennas that are uh, so-called coaxial, where the feed line actually runs up the middle of the antenna, but he doesn't mention anything about that, and I don't think MFJ makes one for the, that band. Um, the other possibility is that it's end-fed, okay, and um, I don't think IBM makes, or uh, MFJ makes one of those either, but then it would be fed from there and you could take your 18 foot down into a second floor, floor or second story, second floor, okay. 18 feet, that bothers me. That just, just seems way too short for the coax. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about best practices. Best practice, however you feed your antenna, is to bring the feed line down to your station ground with a lightning arrestor here, okay, and then run inside the house to your station, wherever it is, and then you run a number six stranded wire. I've been told that's not THHN. THHN refers to the insulation, and there's no insulation here. But if this is where your utility meter is over here, you would run that wire. Be nice if it were buried. Um, 
over to there. That's bonding those two grounds so that if there is a lightning strike nearby, everything is at the same voltage. That's what protects your equipment, okay? Um, so you need the grounding and, and so on in here. These uh, ground rods are not terribly expensive. They can be a little of a bit of a pain to put into the ground. There are ground rod drivers, um, but uh, uh, Ron Rich, no, Brad Rich, when he, Ron Rich used to be the president of our club many years ago. He's silent key now. Uh, Brad Rich had a, a special driver tool for that thing. I've always put them in the old-fashioned way with a sledgehammer, just rolling them, tap, 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 and down it goes. Takes forever. Okay, so you want your antenna, however it is fed, to be properly grounded at a lightning arrestor. Alpha Delta makes the ones that uh, seem to be, uh, that everybody likes. There's Alpha Delta. There are other brands that are also good. You can get both from DX Engineering or from Ham Radio Outlet. Okay, so your antenna cable has got to be substantially longer than 18 feet. Um, <clears throat> was wondering if it was a typo in 180 feet or um, 80 feet. But it certainly is going to be a lot longer than that. Let's see what his question is again. I bought a dipole from MFJ. I'll hook this up to my ICOM. He's got ICON, ICOM transceiver with 18 foot sections of RG2138 coax. Can't get the SWR below infinity. If the SWR won't go below infinity, there's an open or a short somewhere. Um, it could be anywhere in the line. If you have never used this particular piece of coax before, uh, check with a DC ohmmeter that the tip connects to the tip and the shell connects to the shell, but the tip and shell don't connect to each other electrically, okay? Because uh, that way you can make sure that there isn't a short or an open, a DC short or a DC open in the cable. Uh, usually that little test will uh, pick things up immediately and you can tell if you've got a problem like that. Uh, the fact that it shouldn't be reading infinity, something could be disconnected. Uh, MFJ may have not soldered everything all the way to the SO239 there or something like that. Um, obviously there is an issue with connectivity. When it's that far off infinity, it means either a short or open. Um, either a short or an open anywhere through here will cause the infinite reading uh, in your uh, antenna. And you can't tell very much from the R part because that's the, the radiation uh, resistance that you're trying to measure. Um, so that won't work very well. That's what I have to suggest for you. First of all, you're going to need a longer piece of coax. So that if you feed it in the middle, you want to drop it to the ground, straight to the ground, and then run it along the ground to where it is at the ground rod with the lightning arrestor, and then you put that in the house and make sure that this is bonded to your utility ground. And when I say utility ground, I mean the public service utility that brings you your electricity. Uh, all modern, reasonably modern, 40, 50 year old homes will have a panel with a connection to ground, to a ground rod. There would be a ground rod there. Some older homes don't have that if they have copper water pipes going all the way out to the city line, they use that as a ground. And very often, if you do have copper uh, water pipes in your house, they will be connected to this ground as well. 
Okay, now it used to be many years ago that we were told to ground our equipment to a copper water pipe. Well, that doesn't work anymore because the copper water pipe often ends here and then it's plastic out to the mains, which is my case. And nowadays they're wiring or uh, installing plumbing with PEX, which is plastic. It's all plastic. So there's no conductivity there at all. So, um, Don, I hope that answers your question. It gives you something to uh, look forward to there. Um, you've got an open or a short somewhere, and it's your likely spots for it are in connectors, uh, the PL259s. It could be in the radio, but it's doubtful that it's in the radio. And it could also be on the antenna wherever you connect it. Uh, if you bring the cable down n adjacent to the antenna, uh, you will have a very high SWR, but it certainly won't be infinite. So, there you go. There you have it. So, if you would please, help feed the algorithm by subscribing to my uh, uh, channel. And uh, if you would like to uh, throw in a little into the pot for financial support for this channel, uh, you can go to dcastler.com slash support and pick a way that looks like a good way that uh, matches your expectations there. Thank you so much for watching. Until we next meet, 73.